and gentlemen, your attention, please. Just a catch of strays over here. <laughs> You're in for a hell of a show. Keep the faith, hold the line, and own the libs. It's time for our main event. All right, welcome to the Ruthless Friday program. We've got some late breaking news here. This is actually a pretty substantial development, one that we wanted to cover for you all right away. It has a very serious impact potentially on voting here in the next few weeks. Chris Christie has announced this evening that he will be dropping out of the presidential race. Of course, we've been dealing with the consolidation of the field throughout. The difference is is that Christie individually has held a very high market share in the state of New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. New Hampshire is one that in recent weeks has become closer and closer with Donald Trump uh, moving from the 50s down to the 40s and perhaps even the mid-30s, as we've seen polls over the last couple of weeks. It's also shown Nikki Haley grow a consolidated number of sort of anti-Trump votes on the conservative side of the spectrum that has put her within striking distance. Christie has been in that 10, 12, 14 percent mark. She is only single digits behind Uh, you don't have to actually be a political scientist to figure out that if they're not voting for Chris Christie, people could potentially migrate towards Nikki Haley. We have a real race there. Fellas, this is a big development. Chris is a good friend of ours, spent a lot of time with us explaining why he was running for president. What are your reactions? Smug. I mean, first off, I want to say incredible guy. Great guy, first off. A, A Class A human. Uh, outstanding governor, outstanding person. Um, I think he did see that given the way that, you know, the, the voting percentages, the polls where they're headed, um, he saw it was less than realistic that he would get the nomination. But he does see that, like you mentioned, he has a, a significant market share in New Hampshire. Like uh, that essentially, his if it consolidated his support and went to somebody else, that changes everything. Um, and I think seeing that, uh, he made this tough decision. I mean, it's, and and and, I mean, it's it's shocking. You see all the the discussion that's happening right now in real time going around this. It's just, I mean, I think a lot of people are stunned. Didn't see it coming, Duncan. Look, I think it's the right decision. Um, politics, though, is not a zero sum game. Um, and you know, I, I we've gotten some criticism on this show. I think for. You know, what people would say is like, oh, we're going to entertain everybody who's going to run for president and see what, you know, have them come on the show and all this sort of stuff. And the reason why, like, I thought we had to do that, and I assume all of you guys agree, is that you want the base of the Republican Party as big as possible. Yeah, We yes. want this Iowa caucus to be successful. Mm-hmm. We want people, whether they're suburban moms or rural voters or whoever. Because to, they want to win a general election. Because you want to come out and vote. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's why you want the Chris Christie's of the world in a Republican primary. Yeah. If he's inspired people to become a part of the process that ultimately that's a win. And vote, that a win. is a win yeah. for our party. And that's the thing that people don't understand. And I get it. Like they have an anxiety and they're like, I, you know, I support this candidate. Why doesn't everybody else drop out and support my candidate? Or why doesn't everybody drop out and support Donald Trump? And I totally get that. But what Chris Christie did was what Chris Christie sought to do. Right? Yeah. He was like, I want to have an alternative to Donald Trump, and I'm going to articulate that point on the debate stage. And now he's no longer in a position in which he can carry that message forward in a real way. Yeah. And so I made, get it. Made the tough decision. Smash you, take. Look, he provided what was maybe the most entertaining conversation we've ever aired here on the Variety program. Like him, love his politics, hate his politics, objectively a very entertaining guy and naturally personable. And I have a very, very good feeling that him walking away from the presidential race doesn't mean he's walking away from the presidential conversation. And so what I look forward to is hearing from him in the months to come, maybe here even on the show to talk about, you know, lessons learned or what he sees for the Republican Party going forward. Um, Obviously, he's, he's been notched right at 12 points in, in New Hampshire for the last few polls. In the most recent one, this uh, University of New Hampshire poll has Nikki Haley within a stone's throw from Trump. So could this put her ahead of Trump? Maybe. 
Yeah. And I just think that it is it's one of the most fascinating turns that we've seen in this primary so far. Let me just tell you my first impression when I heard this first of all, I was surprised because Chris fights to the death on everything. He just does. Um but I remember when he was sitting here and we asked him whether he was considering, we did several interviews with Chris, hung out with Chris off air. And when we asked him if he was considering running for president, he said, yes, he was considering running for president. And we asked him why. And he said, because I don't think anybody's going to actually prosecute the argument against Donald Trump. And I think I can do that effectively. And I think it's important for the Republican Party to have a choice, a meaningful choice against Donald Trump. And that has come into conflict in recent weeks with the rise of Nikki Haley in New Hampshire and knowing that you've got a handful, you know, 10, 12 percent of, of Chris Christie voters are certainly not going to Donald Trump. You know, you can question whether they're all going to Nikki Haley or they're going to kind of scatter around, but they're certainly not going to go to Donald Trump. And so I've tried to sort of rectify that in my head. I've, you know, thought about it a lot but I got a lot of respect for the guy and I know what he was doing but in the end when he decided to get out before the Iowa caucus that's the ultimate selfless move here Mm. Mm -hmm. what he what he told us is a hundred percent true and you can say a lot of things about Chris Christie of the past and everything whether or not you know he was a, a selfless individual politically or what have you But in this moment, he told you why he was running for president. And if you believed him, in the end, at the end of that campaign, you were 100% vindicated. Because in the end, he believes there needs to be a meaningful choice here. And he knows that he's not going to provide it. I can only imagine how painful that is. I know how hard Mary Pat worked. Yeah. I know how hard Chris worked on this deal. You know, guys like Duhame and Jones and all those guys... You know, they're all working their tails off because they believe in Chris. So to come to the conclusion that it was more important than them, that says something about it, an operation. Yeah. It says something, you know, look, it said something about Mike Pence's operation. Yeah. Or Tim Scott's operation. Right. Right. But in this moment, when you've got a meaningful role to play, choosing this path based on what you originally said is the reason you're running for in the first place hats off hats off I, I look love him or hate him he's doing exactly what he said he would do and for that as a politician i got nothing but love for that i really don't it's just it's it's as good as it gets cosign 100 percent. yeah yeah anyway all right we'll have a lot more of this and more in the upcoming weeks thanks everybody